first feature is Bright Lights, and we're going to be uh, hearing about South High School Academic Mission and Vision. Ryan, would you like to introduce that? Please? Sure. At this time, I'd like to introduce Principal of Waukesha South High School, Tim Joint. Uh, he'll be giving us an update of Waukesha South, uh, the academies inside of their school, some of the work that's happened over the last, uh, actually the last 12 months, uh, and some exciting updates as well as sort of a, the what's to come in the future. So Tim, thanks for joining us tonight. Hi, good evening. Um, I'm, I'm here representing uh, both the Engineering Academy and the Health Academy. Um, and just kind of going over the, the year of planning that we went through um, and some of the changes uh, that especially happened visually um, over the summer and then as well as sharing some of the successes that we uh, ran into this year and some of our uh, steps for moving forward. Um, one of the Big things that uh, we had happened to both academies were some pretty intensive renovations over the summer. Um, what you're looking at here is actually our engineering academy, and there are three rooms. Um, if you look vertically, um, there is basically a uh, room for students to work on CAD and any projects that they have, um, and there are about 60 total computers in there. Um, and then in the second room is our collaboration area. If you look very closely, you're going to see some couches in there. You're going to see some TVs in there where um, kids can share their iPad drawings. And then um, in the front, there's some movable um, tall tables uh, where kids are working with each other. So they're actually almost in a way getting um, their projects in the first room, working on the CAD drawing, the collaborating in the next room. And then the third room over on your far right is actually our maker space. Um, where students have actually access to some pretty um, in pretty high quality um, tools uh, that they can use to actually create um, their projects. So this goes all the way to um, creating metal um, projects. Um, we have 3D printers, um, bending metal, um, tube bending. Um, and whatnot. So uh, what they're actually kind of going through is, is our industry of creating, collaborating, and then making. Um, and the goal there is to make sure that all our engineers are graduating um, with all those skills. Um, we don't want just kids to be able to create and not know that it has to become actually a physical product as well. So we're walking our kids through that before they ever graduate. Um, if we move on to our engineering academy, two rooms kind of um, were overhauled and we're looking on the diagonal. Um, our first engineer. I'm sorry. What's that? Is this engineering too? N nope. This is health academy. Sorry. Oh, okay. Yep. This is a health academy. Um, the first room on your diagonal is um, our health careers room, and if you look at the door in the lower one, that actually passes through into our lab space, um, which is on the right. Um, and in the lab space, we have an area for kids to collaborate, as well as an area for kids in the far back to actually work on some of their projects. Um, if you look very closely, what they're working on there is actually um, recreating um, some of the muscles of the body on um, actual miniature skeletons. So they actually create those out of clay and then label them. Um, and you'll see a few more of those pictures as we, as we move on. Um, here we have students actually utilizing the space. Um, across the top, you're going to see students utilizing the Engineering Academy, and across the bottom, you're going to see students utilizing the Health Academy. Um, you see a student on the far left using the Makerspace in the Engineering Academy. Um, this is actually a video of students. Um, and nope, we're not. We're actually not going to play that. So but it's really neat to see. Um, it's actually students um, utilizing that space to uh, create their CAD programs. And then on the far right here, we have our collaboration area. Um, those students are working on a digital electronics um, project together. Um, currently, what they're doing is they're actually um, grabbing the curriculum from Blackboard 9, and then they're um, creating a digital electronic circuit. Um, this eventually adds up to the point where they're actually creating a circuit um, for a stoplight. Um, that they can create. So whenever you get really frustrated with stoplights, go ahead and blame that on our Engineering <laughs> Academy students. Um, down over in the lower left, um, here are the first stages of those skeletons that we were talking about with uh, clay. Um, you can see that they're starting to label um, and they're working in groups. Again, you're seeing that they're using their iPads um, to look up what those skeletal muscles look like um, as well as the placement of them. And then on the far right, you're seeing students collaborate over um, a heart pump exercise um, where they're actually utilizing um, balloons as um, mock pumps for the heart um, to figure out what different pressures do for um, their heart. So a lot of hands-on activities for both those students um, really has kind of allowed us a lot more 
um, ability to collaborate with each other. It's allowed us to do a lot more blended styles of learning. Um, we were kind of constricted uh, before with our old um, classrooms, and this has really opened up. Within four weeks, our kids are already getting a, a really great experience in both academies. Um, looking at some successes from this year, um, the Engineering Academy had the highest ACT score, 27.1, in the state of Wisconsin. Um, it had the third highest high school state report card score, and it was on Newsweek's top schools in the nation. It was number 48 in the nation, which put it at number two in the state um, for Newsweek. So hoo-ha for that. Um, Health Academy increased from exceeding expectations to significantly exceeding expectations, which means both Engineering and Health Academy were the two schools in the district to gain the significantly exceeds expectations on the school report card, which is um, a very high honor um, and something that we would credit to uh, not only the teachers in the academy, but also our teachers in South High School who give them the comprehensive curriculum um, in English, social studies, uh, many of their science classes and their social studies classes. So keeping in mind that um, our South High School teachers are also teachers that teach our um, Health Academy and Engineering Academy students. Um, and lastly, uh, Mr. Lehman, uh, Mr. Adam McDonald, and myself will be presenting at CISA 1 convening this year. Um, we're going to be uh, presenting on what uh, personalized learning looks like at the secondary level, um, and specifically focusing on our Engineering Academy and Health Academy and how we're using those two career pathways to help um, give kids a little bit more of a, a personalized learning experience. Um, moving forward instructionally, one of the big pieces that we're pushing forward with this year is uh, blended styles of learning. Um, we're asking at a bare minimum that our students get at least um, one experience with a blended style of learning each quarter, which means they're um, utilizing both um, either an online um, curriculum or an online experience as well as an in-person experience. Um, not surprisingly, this has already taken off um, within probably the first two weeks. A lot of our students really kind of glommed onto this. Um, on the left-hand side, you're actually seeing a student utilizing um, the Project Lead the Way curriculum online to help with his skeletal muscle. Again, he's already labeled out, so he's going to start putting on um, the different clay muscles. So he's utilizing um, his online technology to do some research and also access the curriculum and the, the agenda for the day, as well as complete the project in person. Um, his teacher is there and available for him if he has any questions. Um, the interesting part is we actually um, weren't sure what this was going to look like in the Engineering Academy because CAD is difficult to do on the iPads. And what we've actually found is the kids really have um, done well with it. Um, they're still accessing their curriculum actually on their iPads. Um, they're accessing their project. They're accessing what they need to do for the day. And then they're actually completing it on the CAD project. So it's actually a really, really effective way of doing um, so our, our learning in those Project Lead the Way courses. Um, last year, we had some students actually uh, record some videos of how to do um, small tasks on the CAD program so students can access that whenever they need it um, and can figure out uh, how to answer their questions. Again, what we're trying to develop is, is a more individualized, personalized curriculum for those students um, where they start to learn how to access um, their learning at their time. Um, the other piece that we're moving forward with full board um, is some authentic project-based education through business partnerships. Um, both our governance boards have been reinvigorated. Um, in the Engineering Academy, we're working closely with Mortensen Construction and Hydrothermal this year. Um, and in the Health Academy, they're working with Pro Healthcare and WCTC on some of their health plans. To give you an example of what I'm talking about, um, we have a project coming up with our seniors and Hydrothermal. Hydrothermal came to uh, the Engineering Academy with an issue. Um, some of their uh, machinery had to be tested um, by actually putting, filling it up with water. And the only way that they could figure out if it was watertight was to have it held in place by two C-clamps. So they would have um, tens of thousands of dollars worth of equipment being held together by C-clamps and then filling it up with water and crossing their fingers that it didn't fall off or break. Um, so they've actually come to our seniors and our seniors are actually going to help hydrothermal by figuring out a better way for hydrothermal to actually test their products um, in a much safer way for both um, their employees and for them to save their bottom dollar as well. So that'll be um, coming up relatively quickly. 
Um, and then with Mortenson Construction, um, we're looking at um, looking at helping them out with some of their upcoming construction projects, and we're meeting with them relatively shortly to do that as well. Again, the focus is at our um, high school level, we want to give kids a real life experience um, working with businesses and get them used to what are you actually going to see when you come out of high school and when you come out of college so that they're actually getting real to life experiences. Um, moving forward this year as a charter school, other than um, our blended uh, learning and also our um, strive to work a little bit more with businesses, um, we've added a dean of students for the academies. That's Adam McDonald. Adam McDonald was our coordinator for the Engineering Academy last year. Um, he's going to be the dean of students for both academies. Um, he's going to oversee instruction from a coaching perspective, help out with the mission and the vision, and also um, implementation of high quality educational opportunities. He's done a, a fantastic job in our engineering academy and was really instrumental in making sure that that space is as ready as it is. Um, and we're excited about being able to have kind of a consistent message and move our two academies forward um, hand in hand um, to really kind of excel them um, even beyond where, where they're at right now. Um, secondly, we're working really closely with both governance boards. Um, and this has been a, an important move in that second piece where we're actually getting involved with other businesses. Um, we reinvigorated both boards with new members from local businesses. Um, who are able to tell us what skills gap we're, we're dealing with. They're able to tell us very quickly, here's what kids uh, who are coming in and we're employing are not coming out of high school or not coming out of college with so that we can very quickly make changes to our curriculum to make sure that we are um, getting our kids um, the, the necessary skills that they need to be hireable um, here in Waukesha. Um, they're currently breaking into committees, uh, not unlike your own school board yourself, um, to make the, the work a little bit more applicable. So we have um, oftentimes a curriculum and instruction committee, a finance committee, an executive committee, um, and a communications committee, um, a communications committee focusing on making sure that um, people know about our engineering academy and our health academy. Um, that's been something that we've struggled with to get our, our name out there, but um, we're hoping with, uh, with help from a governance board we can very quickly ramp up that effort as well. Um, we've set up a 501c3 through the Waukesha County Community Foundation, um, which is a fantastic uh, partnership that we've been able to create. Um, very, very helpful in making sure that we're meeting all the needs of, of a 501c3. So that has been... About that, or do you want me to wait to you? Uh, I'm going to be done in two seconds. Okay, I'll yep. wait. And then, uh, I, again, the biggest piece that they've really been able to help us do is identify the gaps for, for more employable graduates. So with that, Ms. Landville... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the 501c3 intrigues me because we already have the Waukesha Education Foundation, which accepts all kinds of donations and makes all kinds of grants. So this is really bypassing that. Um, plus, you can't in a public school, even though it's a charter, I assume, maybe Todd can correct me if I'm wrong, donate to anything related to salary. So it would just be essentially equipment supplies, I assume. And right now, it's very um, low level that, that we're just trying to start out, um, but we're looking at what do we use those funds for, and right now, it's it's currently, we, we aren't looking at salary, we're looking more at some... We can't the, right. do salary. Correct. Right. So <laughs> what we're looking at is is a project within that 501c3. It's a project fund within that 501c3 that they fundraise for. And then um, as we go through the governance board to get that money back from that. So it'll be a process to go through our governance board. And then it actually has to go through the Waukesha Education Foundation as well. Oh, it does. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and actually, charter schools. It looks schools, like it's separate. So the, Yeah, and charter schools are encouraged to have their own separate you know, 503 uh, 501c3 accounts mm -hmm. to uh, get grants and so on. Many, many granting agencies, if they think it's tied, if it's, if it's a school, they're not going to give us a grant, but they will give a smaller organization like a charter school a right. grant if, it's, if they have a determination letter in a 501c3. So and then it'll go through the WEF. Uh, uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, to get there, they have to have their own, it's called determination letter, to show that they're a nonprofit organization and the only way to do that is to have their own 501c3 okay thank you thank you did you want to add something Ryan? No. Oh, okay any other questions any questions or comments i would i would just Mr. add Bonner? yeah i would just add uh at the end there tim was talking about the governance boards and i've had the opportunity now to meet the new well some of the old and some of the some new people on in the governance boards because they were getting a little bit stagnant over there and i would have to tell you it's a it's a huge turnaround at that level 
Uh, we have some new faces and people there that are really driven. In fact, uh, none of this every other month anymore. It's going to be meeting monthly, and we're going to do this, this, and this. <laughs> Great, uh, but it's but it's very positive, and uh, and and the whole atmosphere over there, I, I would uh, I would brag about. It's just wonderful. What kind of people are on are on the uh, the board? Um, when we look at the engineering governance board, we're looking at uh, Mike Duckett um, as our is our current president. Um, we're looking at um, a few other engineers as well as construction companies, um, and a few um, personnel from Quad Graphics um, in terms of a marketing person from there, as well as um, and not from Quad Graphics. Um, I'm thinking of a, a technology person as well. Um, we're, we're trying to round that all off. Um, we're working with Pro Healthcare on the um, Health Academy Board. Um, Cheryl Gemmanjanani is on uh, is the president there. Um, we're also working with WCTC and a few other organizations as well. Great, thank you. So they're all people that are interested in those specific fields. Absolutely, that's great because they'll provide a lot of leadership that you know we're looking for from the community. Great. Any other questions or yes? Thank you, Ms. Ranichek. Thank you. Uh, the four businesses that you spoke of, the Martinson Pro Healthcare and the two others, were, I feel like last year we talked to, or we heard a piece on STEM immersion where you were putting them together. Is that the same thing? Is that completely different? Yep. It's, it's born out of that. Um, it's kind of that year two leap. Um, last year when we did STEM immersion, we just did it with Mortensen Construction. Um, and we're continuing on with Morton, Mortensen Construction to make the project that we worked on last year, um, which was really kind of the marketing aspect with our engineers to get them a little bit more used to presentations um, and marketing their, um, their products. Um, we're going to the second level with that, as well as involving them into um, one of our courses, uh, which will be looking at their new construction on, and I cannot remember, I think it's actually Pro Healthcare um, building that, that they're going to be doing, and we're going to be looking at um, joist work there. Um, we had such success with it that we want to continue that, um, which is why you see hydrothermal being folded in um, and um, the Health Academy, because they were not involved with STEM Merge in last year, they're going to find their, their first um, implementation this year. Um, and it's probably more than likely going to be with Pro Healthcare, but we're already working with WCTC on a couple of our transcripted credits as well. So those are the four Mortensen, Pro Health, <laughs> Hydrothermal, and WCTC? And hopefully more. Dr. I think that I speak for everybody that we're very proud of, of the academies. Um, what's the graduation rate? One hundred percent. Is it a hundred percent? I'm if it's not, it's very, very close. I think it is. Yeah, I, I would not be blown away if it was. Okay. Do you know the percentage of, of uh, students that move on? to the next level in their education? Mm -hmm. um, when we look at, at numbers, um, most are moving on okay. to some level. Um, we are seeing uh, some that are going to uh, like a, a UW Waukesha or even a WCTC, um, as well as four-year colleges. So it, it, we're really spanning um, anywhere from a technical college all the way up to a four-year college as well. Okay. Any plans on tracking, for me, a much more important number than you know, moving to the secondary is completing. Because mm -hmm. a lot of emphasis is put on you know, students that graduate, how many are going to college and whatnot. But for me, it's much more important to know how many are actually graduating from college. And that is, I think, a better indication of whether they're college ready. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, emotionally and mentally and, and educationally. Yeah. So is any plan on tracking that. I know that I've had discussions with yeah. before about that, but I think that's an important number, especially for, you know, a student uh, academy that's graduating 100 percent and then almost 100 percent are going. Moving on. And, and we've had that discussion even about our AVID program is trying to figure out how many stick with it afterwards. It's just a difficult number to get because an email address changes, a phone number changes. So it's difficult to keep track of those students. But um, we do try to do our best to get all that information back as much as we can. It's just, it's a tough one to, to grasp. Well, it looks good. And I think that we're all very proud of what's going on at the South. And Thank you. At all our high schools. Just real quickly, I certainly echo. <laughs> What Pat was saying as far as our, our pride in this and congratulations and all of that. Um, but just to sort of piggyback on what he's saying, are we seeing what we had sort of hoped where, 
you know, Marquette University Engineering School, MSOE, Madison Engineering, you know, whatever, mm -hmm. are they really coming to try to recruit? Are we seeing that happening? Um, we're seeing an uptick in that. And actually, the reason we're seeing an uptick in that is because of our reinvigorated governance board. Right. Um, they're, they're the ones who are reaching out oftentimes to their own alma maters sure. um, yeah. and going, why are we not in, in these schools more often? Mm -hmm. um, a, a lot of our students are going to, uh, currently at this time, we're, we're finding a lot of them are actually going to uw Platteville from the Engineering Academy. Oh, yes. Makes Very sense, good. too. Mm -hmm. sure. So, um, and, and I can speak, at, and I know a little bit more of the Engineering Academy aspect of it because I've been a little bit closer related to that one, but um, that we are noticing a, a lot more attention by some of those secondary okay. institutions. Thank you. Tim, what's your role as a principal at South High School in this program? I, I just watch. No, uh, no, <laughs> uh, no, actually, uh, my, my role in, in all this is to make sure that we're moving forward on, on our mission and vision. Um, with Adam in place, really, I'm going to work closely with Adam McDonald uh, to make sure that we're continuously pushing forward. I mean, our biggest um, challenge right now is that we have had some success, and we want to try to maintain that success and continue to grow. Um, that's not always easy to do, so um, we're going to keep on kind of Pushing, pushing the pedal to make sure that we're constantly looking at new and innovative ways to educate our kids and make sure that our kids are getting the best education they can. So is Adam, Adam serves somewhat as a, as a principal, providing leadership and- A dean of students is, is probably the best way to put it. Okay. Um, you know, really being able to be an instructional coach as well as looking at um, different ways of providing professional development for our students and making sure that um, he's looking at different ways to educate our students and make sure that we're staying ahead of the curve. Okay. Do some of the teachers that teach in the academy also teach in the regular high school? Uh, yes. Strictly in the academy. Yes. yes. Very much so. Okay. Very so much so. It's it's a it's a give and take. Um, we have some of our teachers in our academies that teach South students, and we have many of our South teachers teaching students in the academies. And that's why I, I always try to make sure that I note that, um, because anytime you look at data that comes out at the district, please note that um, our teachers teach all of our students in our building, which includes our engineering academy, wow. includes our health academy, includes our South students. Wow. So um, some of that data is somewhat misrepresented because it is um, individually the engineering academy, is individually the health academy, and then is individually the South. You might not you know, know this, but I'm wondering how about how many students would you say in the academy come from North and come from West? Um, I don't know if I could give you a total off the top of my head, um, but I could certainly look into that and okay, give that. I just is wondering what percentage. Are most of the kids in their South kids? Are... Yes, the, the, the grand majority are still South footprint okay. students at this but time, you have yes. some from North and some from West. Yep. Okay. Well, like all board members have said, Tim, we are extremely proud of the accomplishments and achievements of the Academy, of the students, of the staff, of yourself as leader, there's a lot to be proud of and a lot of wonderful things going on at South and keep broadcasting that all over Southeastern Wisconsin because it's a great story to tell. Will do, thank you. Thank you.